popular ingredient in cosmetics, and it comes in and out of headlines, but it became a big topic again after the documentary Not So Pretty. And I actually had zero idea how many people really believed that talc will hurt them. Talc in their cosmetics very specifically will harm them. So I decided to go ahead and make a video about why talc is in your cosmetics and why you shouldn't be worried about it. And to help me with this video, I reached out to someone I've been following for years on Instagram. Her name is Jen Novakovich. She's a cosmetic scientist and also a science communicator behind the EcoWell. And she really has some great information. So I'm gonna really let her do the talking here. All right, so if you're not familiar with the Not So Pretty documentary or why people are so upset about talc use in cosmetics, it's because there's concern that it causes cancer and other health issues. I even saw so many people on social media toss all of their cosmetics that have talc in it. You're done. You're done. Goodbye. I'm about to throw away all of this makeup. Hi. So it was like, really mind blowing to watch this happen. But does talc really deserve all this negative attention? We've seen so many different ingredients, both in food and also in the beauty industry that have been demonized without any real evidence. So this is why I thought this might be an important video. So first I think it's important to talk about why we use talc in cosmetics anyway. So I'll kick it off to Jen. So the use of talc in cosmetics is variable, but most commonly it's used as a mattifying ingredient of sorts to reduce the wetness of areas also. So that's why it's used in baby powder. Talc in makeup products also improves the aesthetics. It also does this while bulking up the formula and it's quite cost effective. So those are, those are the predominant uses of talc in your cosmetic products. So to recap, talc is used in cosmetics to absorb moisture. So think like your face powders, when you have oily shininess, even like baby powder, if you're trying to avoid chafing, something like that. It helps to improve the feel and texture of a product. It even helps to bulk up a product. So it makes it feel like you're getting more and it can make your makeup look more opaque, which actually comes into play a lot when you are using color cosmetics. I personally know that I won't be giving up talc. And one of my favorite products, by the way, is a face powder that I've been using for years that contains talc and I love it. There's so many powders I've used out there and this one product is still one of my favorites. So you've heard me say that people are concerned that they might get cancer or have other health issues if they use products that contain talc. So let's hear from Jen about what the exact problem is. There are two predominant concerns for talc in cosmetics. The first, is with respect to ovarian cancer. Your viewers may be aware of some of the class action lawsuits that took place in the early 2010s against Johnson & Johnson's for their baby powder. And there was a purported link between that and ovarian cancer. Also, I'll just say these class action lawsuits, they, they prompted more research to happen. The overwhelming evidence does not support a link, does not show that the use of talc actually translates to an increased risk of ovarian cancer. I will just also say that many of these class action lawsuits in light of the growing evidence to refute that purported link have been thrown away. And so that is one potential concern for, for talc. Some people may also say that asbestos contamination may lead to ovarian cancer. The evidence does not support a link between talc on the market and ovarian cancer. So the research that has been done has been done on talc containing products that are on the market, notably the product that everyone is so concerned with, Johnson & Johnson baby powder. The second part of that is the risk of asbestos contamination. And so why is this an issue? Well, when you're mining talc, talc is something that is mined there is also just inherently asbestos in the same area. And so it's really important for ingredient suppliers of talc to do adequate purity control, essentially. So they have to take the right steps to ensure that the talc that they're sending out to cosmetic brands is safe. Then we look at the Claire's example where there was 
asbestos contamination. In Health Watch, a store that markets products to teens is under fire. The U.S. Public Interest Research Group is calling for Claire's to remove three makeup products from their shelves after claiming they tested positive for asbestos. FDA regulators are warning people not to use some makeup from Claire's. Okay, ladies, here's what you need to look for this morning. We're talking about three products from 2017. Claire's eyeshadow, compact powder, and contour palette. The problem? They tested positive for asbestos. I will just say there are very stringent purity requirements. The Claire's case, based off of the evidence available, was an outlier. It was certainly a concern and very important for the industry and everyone really to have attention on this case. The FDA since then has done a lot of work to test talc containing products on the market. And so since then, they recently, this past year actually did a survey of products on the market and they found that there was zero asbestos contamination. So I often hear that asbestos is inherently contaminated in talc and well, it may be there initially, there are steps to take for purity uh, requirements to ensure that the talc is safe in the context of a cosmetic. So yes, there is a possibility that you could end up with asbestos contamination, but this goes for anything that you are using. We've had lots of different products on the market be recalled, especially when it comes to food. Again, I, I always like look at the food industry because I think we see a lot of the things that happen, like the trends also come into the beauty industry. We see recalls all the time. It doesn't mean that one ingredient or a certain type of product altogether is bad. We can't let one bad apple spoil the bunch. Asbestos contamination is highly unlikely, especially if you use reputable brands because they ensure safety by doing testing on their products. And I'll tell you, when big companies like Johnson & Johnson get hit with these class action suits, that doesn't mean that these are real claims. That doesn't mean that this is actually true. This is a public perception issue a lot of the time. So when big companies like that settle, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're guilty of what they're being, you know, uh, accused of. It sometimes means that they're just so sick of this problem that's being thrown at them and they're worried about public perception because you can now see how public perception can really ruin the reputation of a brand and also of an ingredient. So I can imagine that brands like Johnson & Johnson and other really big companies are working to really improve their testing and safety so they can never be faced with this again because that's that's the last thing that they want. And while Johnson & Johnson has decided to discontinue talc in their baby powder products, it doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the wrong or that what was thrown at them in their class action suit was correct. What's worse for big companies like that is public perception. And if it makes you feel better, the FDA has really gotten involved. They tested 50 different products from different price ranges, different brands, and different manufacturers for asbestos contamination in their talc products. All of the samples tested negative for asbestos contamination. That is so important to know. These brands are testing their products Claire's with their issues, that was kind of an outlier. That doesn't mean that all of these other brands aren't taking care of you and are not reputable. I'm telling you, no brand wants a customer who's getting sick. We all want our customers to be healthy, happy, and buying more product. You don't want to make somebody sick. So I, I can tell you that brands do not want this to happen. And I can only assume that they are making sure their products are safe. And also the FDA is doing another round of this testing and they're gonna be releasing the results from that sampling next year. Now, I want you to know, I do not care if you choose to not use talc. If you want to go with products that are talc free, you have the right to do that. I don't feel strongly about it at all. I promise, even though I'm doing this video, I do not feel strongly about it. I just happen to see lots of comments on one of my more recent videos about talc and you know, like people not wanting to use talc and even saying to me that I'm spreading misinformation. And that is the reason why I decided to look into it even more because while I don't feel strongly about talc itself, I do think that demonizing ingredients and getting the industry to get rid of ingredients can really have an effect on the industry. When you get rid of ingredients that are more affordable, like talc, it then comes back to you as a consumer. Your products become more expensive. And that's because the alternatives are more expensive and they're not always better. And in the case of talc, in my personal opinion, I think talc is definitely better. 
And then another reason why I think it's bad to demonize ingredients and then cause the industry to stop using an ingredient is because then we start putting out products that are just not as good. You know, sometimes these are ingredients that we need out in the market that will help somebody in the future. Not necessarily talc. Talc is kind of a frivolous ingredient, I guess, in my opinion, but there are other ingredients that we've seen get demonized and then eventually removed completely from the industry. And then the products are inferior that are made with the alternatives. And sometimes the alternatives aren't always that much better because they haven't been tested as long. When you take an ingredient that has been used for years and years and years, there has been so much testing using that ingredient. When you introduce all these new alternatives, some of the time the information on them is very new. So it's gonna take years and years and years to finally find out that maybe these ingredients are causing some issues, some kind of like, whether it's even just something as simple as irritation. So every time you introduce an alternative, you're not necessarily getting better for you. So again, I don't care if you use talc or you don't use talc, it's really up to you. Talc is one of those ingredients that I just, it's, it's kind of frivolous. It just happened to become a big topic and all I really care about is making sure the right information is out there. So with all that information, I still feel comfortable using products that contain talc. It's totally up to you. I just wanna make sure that the right information is out there. I hope this video was helpful. A big thank you to Jen because she is just a wealth of knowledge. You should definitely follow her online, especially on Instagram. She shares some really great information about the beauty industry and ingredients specifically, and also sometimes about food as well. So go give her a follow at The Eco Well. Follow me, I'm at Susan Yara on Instagram, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.